Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with some more math today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do this problem here, so stick around and I'll show you the steps. So the problem we're going to be doing is find dy dx by implicit differentiation. And we're going to be finding dy dx given that x times y equals x minus y. So similar process to a lot of other implicit differentiation problems. The first thing you want to do is take note of what it's asking you to find. So we're looking for dy dx, which just means the derivative of y with respect to x. You want to pay attention to this because it does give you a lot of information actually just within this here. What this is telling us is that we're finding the derivative of y where x is our independent variable. So x is our variable and y is a function of x. That's what this is telling us here, right? Whatever's on top, this letter here where we have y, tells us that this is our function, and this variable that we have down here tells us this is our variable. So x is a variable, y is a function. We're going to be taking the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to x, right? So that's all we're going to do. So let's start here on the left side. First, we need to take the derivative of x times y with respect to x. So how do you find the derivative of that? Well, since we have x times y, two things being multiplied together, we're going to need to use the product rule. So to use the product rule, we just would say the derivative of the first times the second. So the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, right? And then we're going to multiply that by the second function. And then we're going to add the first, so x, without taking the derivative, times the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? We don't know what y is. We don't have an explicit formula for y in terms of x. So therefore, we aren't going to be able to know the exact derivative of y with respect to x. So the best we can do is to just say the derivative of y is just dy dx, because this represents the derivative of y with respect to x. And like I said, since we don't have an explicit formula for y, that's the best we're going to be able to do. So then this is going to be equal to the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1, and then minus the derivative of y with respect to x, again, is just dy dx. Okay, so now we're going to follow kind of a similar process to a lot of other implicit differentiation problems. First thing you want to do is apply implicit differentiation. That's what we just did here. Once you've found the derivative of both sides, then what you want to do is get all your terms with the thing you're looking for. So in this case, all of our dy dx terms over onto one side of the equation and all of our non dy dx terms over to the other side of our equation. There are some cases where you wouldn't do it this way, but um, it's a good, good place to start. I would recommend trying that first. Um, if you find down the road that you get stuck, then you can go back and try something else. But you'll see this is a problem where that's going to be the best way to do it. It's usually the simplest if it does work. So it's a good starting point. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see our terms with dy dx in them are there and there, right? So this term here, this is just y. 1 times y is just y. So y doesn't have a dy dx in it. So we're going to subtract this over to the other side of our equation. And then this dy dx, we, we want to move over to this side with our other dy dx term. So since we have minus dy dx over here, we can add dy dx to both sides to get it over here to get it over here. So subtracting y cancels that, adding dy dx cancels that. So we're going to be left with x times dy dx plus dy dx equals 1 minus y. OK, so let's just move this up to the top here. OK, so now we've gotten all of our dy dx terms on one side of our equation and all of our non dy dx terms to the other side. So now that we've done that, 
since every term over here on the left side of our equation has a dy dx in it, we can factor the dy dx out. So if we pull dy dx out of each of these terms, what would we be left with? x times dy dx. If we pull out the dy dx, we're just going to be left with x. And then over here, if we pull out the dy dx, we aren't going to be left with anything, but we, we can't just put 0. What you want to think about is what would we need to multiply by dy dx to get dy dx? Well, it would just be 1, right? dy dx times 1 would get us back to having a dy dx over here, okay? So now over here, we're still just going to have 1 minus y. Now we want to get our dy dx all by itself. So we have dy dx times a bunch of other stuff. If we want to move all this other stuff over to the other side, all we have to do is divide both sides by all this other stuff. So doing that, we'll cancel those. And we'll just be left with dy dx equals 1 minus y over x plus 1. Okay, we just divided both sides by x plus 1. So that gives us our dy dx in terms of x and y. Again, notice we don't have an explicit formula for dy dx in terms of x, which is what we ideally would like. But the reason for that is because our original equation that we started with, it had a bunch of x's and y's kind of jumbled together. So a lot of times when that happens, the best you can do to find the derivative of y is going to be in terms of x and y instead of just x. So that's what we have here. Um, go check out some of my other implicit differentiation videos. I've got a handful of others. Go give those a, a watch. Um, try doing these problems before I do, uh, just so you can kind of get some practice. Um, but go, yeah, check those out now while this is all fresh in your mind. Um, really give yourself that extra practice to kind of hammer these ideas into your head. Um, hope it was helpful for you. If you have any questions that I didn't address, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help address those questions for you. Um, thanks for watching.